It remains the deadliest terror attack on British soil, but on Lockerbie bombing. Huge questions remain about what happened and who was to blame. Now, new details are emerging about the atrocity, which killed 270 people. Reports in the US media say that charges will soon be brought against a Libyan man suspected of making the explosives, which blew up Pan Am Flight 103 in the skies of southern Scotland. It's claimed the prosecutors will soon seek the extradition of Abu Agia Mohammed Massoud to stand trial in the US. The Wall Street Journal says he's currently in Libya. Another Libyan, Abdel Basset al Magrahi, remains the only man convicted over the bombing. With more, here's our reporter. Dave. So, Abu now, Nicola Sturgeon has once again emphasised the safest Christmas this year is one at home with your own household. If you must meet up with others, she wants you to meet people on one day out of the five and preferably outside. But this is the latest guidance. The rules remain the same. Changes have been taking place elsewhere. In Wales, it's now against the law to meet up with more than one household. And tonight, Northern Ireland announced that they will impose a six-week lockdown on Boxing Day. Now, one of the country's most senior COVID advisers has told this programme it's not too... Well, those were some of the voices that represent the difficult decisions that families are, of course, making this Christmas. But there are others, Rebecca, who are far more sure about exactly what they're going to do. That is right, Connor. BBC Scotland has seen figures that show police have been called nearly 5,000 times to break up house parties since they had the power to do so in late summer. That's over 50 times a day. Some involved are repeat offenders. Now, with all the pressure of buying Christmas presents, many of us have been relying on so-called deferred payment companies like Klarna and Clear Clearpay. They give us the option to add a few extra items into our trolleys and online carts, and you don't have to st stump up the cash there and then. They've seen a boom in business over the last few months. But debt charities say the urge to buy now, pay later is a growing concern. In fact, the Financial Conduct Authority is looking into the sector at the moment. And to tell us much more on this is the Nines Consumer Affairs correspondent, Nick Sheridan. Nick, over to you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks no so problem. much. Always yeah, got Nick. top advice, don't you, Nick? Yeah. Now, uh, post Brexit trade talks remain in a serious situation, according to the Prime Minister. It seems bizarre already thinking about I the Olympics know. again after we had all that humming and hawing over know, the last year about whether they were going to happen yeah, 2019. Yeah, exactly. And it'll be funny. It'll be here before we know it. Oh, indeed, it will be. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Now, on this day 10 years ago in Tunisia, a street vendor set himself on fire to protest against police corruption. His death started a revolution in the country and caused a ripple effect elsewhere in what became known as the Arab Spring. Here's a look back at what happened. Horror, but it's apparently becoming more prevalent, especially in the Glasgow area and especially for the poor bin collectors. They are up in arms about the sheer number of rats that they're coming across on their rounds because some collections have been suspended, which inevitably leads to more rubbish lying about. And their union says it's creating the perfect breeding ground. David Wallace Lockhart has more now, but just a warning, if you don't like seeing rats, quickly look away now. Oh, it's awful. It really is. I really don't envy them. It's, oh, it must be absolutely awful. I know when he said as well that when he moves a bin and ten rats run out. Oh, oh it, it does. It gives you the shivers. It does. It gives you the shivers. Oh. Right. OK, now it's one of the big debates that always comes up at this time of year, doesn't it? Is Die Hard a Christmas film? Well, today it's director John McTiernan said it is. So that's the debate settled, isn't it? Can we all agree? Maybe not. Yeah, it's important for us to be honest here that actually neither of us have uh, watched the film. But here <laughs> is a snippet which we'll uh, look across here as well. <laughs> now, with the weather... You can settle it for yeah, us. Yeah, settle the debate. <laughs> Absolutely. It Absolutely. Is it is, yes. Oh, there we go homework, then. The pair of you tonight is to watch it so you can have an opinion. <laughs> um, but look at that I wanted picture. to talk to you about snow, actually. And quick question for you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. How tall are you? Somewhere between 5'4 four and 5'5". Five five. Imagine six foot, six inches of snow. That's oh what we God. had in Japan in the last 72 hours. Wow. Record-breaking amounts of snow. Uh, really, really wintry conditions. Really cold Siberian. Oh, 
you said it now. It. Yeah, it does look quite chilly, doesn't it? I know, I know. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. Right, finally tonight, here is an interesting story. Some people in the small village of Earth have been dealing with a series of power cuts happening in early evenings. Initially, they had no idea what was causing the problem, but now they reckon they have cracked the case and tracked down the culprits. SP Energy Network sent an engineer to investigate and he spotted thousands of birds dancing on overhead power cables. Lovely that pictures. Is incredible. It is incredible. That, that is, is all from Connor and me for tonight. Laura Miller will be here at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Good night. Good night.